Welcome. This is Innovatics, our program Data Science for Good. This is uh, the Python track, and this is session four. So we'll start with a real quick review of session three, which you see on screen now. We finished with uh, getting into conditionals and loops. So conditionals, real quick, is basically a, a branch. So you're asking if some condition is true. So in this example here, you just say you got a number, a variable that's called number, and you're just saying, hey, is it greater than four, uh, two? Well, it's either true or false. And it's a simple one where you only ask for the true case. And these two lines are to block a code that are run if in case um, line three number is greater than two is true. So you can all, all uh, you can ask a lot of these rel uh, relational operators. Uh, so they're uh, greater than, greater than, or equal to, less than, less than, or equal to, equal to, not equal to. And there are, you can apply those also to strings. So, you know, uh, Draco is, is great, is, uh, I'm sorry, is less than Edward, because alpha numerically, the occurs first. So uh, these relational operators can be applied to uh, almost any data type. The other one is when you have a true case, which is indicated by the, the highlight here on line four, five, uh, six. But that's the true case. Well, what block of code, can you have a block of code that addresses the uh, false case? So number greater than two. If it's true, it will run these lines. Else, well then it's, I'm sorry, the number is less than or equal to two. In which case, these lines are, this block of code, these lines are uh, run. You can also chain these. You can say if number is greater than 2, else if number is less than 2. Well, the only remaining thing is there isn't a condition where it is exactly equal to 2. So you can chain together a bunch of these if, else if, else if, else if, else if, and you don't even need an else. So you can have infinite variations of if, else's, and else's. So it's nice just to uh, play with that. And here's a simple example. It's like enter your name and we were just checking if, well, you enter your first name and we're just checking if your name was in uh, this list of well, we only had here, in this case, four Harry Potter uh, characters, well, first names. <clears throat> loops, a review on loops, and this is this on session three, our previous session in Python, was uh, very simplistic, and we'll get deeper into it in this session. So, a lot of times you know uh, where you're starting and ending, with like a repetition. So if you want to go from 0, 1, 2, okay, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you, you typically will use this range uh, function. <clears throat> and it's it will generate numbers for you. In this case, it'll be integers, you know, like I said, 0, 1, 2, 5, 6, 7. So it starts at the start, but the stop, which we said is 8 right here, it will never get to 8, so it'll infinitely get to 8, but infinitely close to get to 8, but not get there. So if you do iterate through it, this is what you'll end up having. So really quick, hey, just go for loop, for loop, whatever index you want, you can call it anything you want. Uh, a lot of people by convention use like IJK. And that's if you don't care necessarily about the name, like right now we don't care. But sometimes these numbers mean something. So you'll give it a name, not just uh, like a generic variable name like I. And here we just loop through the Harry Potter characters. Once again, we only have four right now. So 
how do you know? I want to look through the characters of Harry Potter. So how many names are in that sequence or collection? And you should take the approach that uh, you don't know. So you just talk to the object saying, tell me your length. So you can find the length of uh, things that make sense. If you have a, a bunch of things, yeah, you can you can do the length. You can't do the length of an integer. It just makes no sense. Uh, length of a float makes no sense. So you do the length. You so we're doing the range of the length of this sequence called Harry Potter characters. So almost like math. You have to do the inner parts first. So the length of HP characters, it's right up here. Well, that should be turned four. And so you're really doing the range of four. So it'll be zero, one, two, three. So you could print out Harry, Car Harry Potter characters sub I. That's how people read it. They say sub I, meaning subscript I. So when uh, you can do this thing, to a to a um, a sequence or a collection of elements, then that data type is is what's called subscriptable. So uh, one way you can subscript it is just talk to it with an index. I'm sorry, with with uh, the, the index of that um, data type. So HP characters, you can say sub i. That's how you. That's how people talk about. It. So, the first time around, it's going to say HP characters sub zero. Next time around, it's going to say hey, HP characters sub one, HP characters sub two, HP characters sub three, and then it's out of the loop. And we just printed both things out. We didn't just print the name out. We also wanted to print I just to show you. If, it's sometimes nice to know uh, the index along with the actual element. So HP characters sub zero is Harry. And this is uh, what a lot of people call the, uh, the more uh, Pythonic way to do things, the more idiomatic way in, in Python to do it. Uh, you don't have to keep track of all this stuff. You just say, hey, there's this thing that is subscriptable or iterable that I can iterate through it. Just talk to it and say, hey, go through your list. I'm sorry. Go through your elements, whatever makes sense for that data type. So this is a list, HP characters is a list, so it's going to do each element at a time. Well, we saw the first data type that we saw that you can do this iteration through was uh, a string. So you can iterate through a string. So you can say for character in, you know, first name. And it'll come back and say it's my name. It'll come back with an E first, then a D, then a W, then an A, then an R, and a D. Edward. So things that are iterable come back and have uh, something that makes sense. So a string, when you iterate over, it returns characters. And it's like, okay, that makes sense. If you have a list like this, HP characters, or um, a tuple, or other elements, when you iterate over it like this, you get one element at a time. So just a Pythonic way to do it. Uh, you'll see there's a lot more. This is what this is sometimes called the imperative. So this is up here. This is the imperative way to do things, and that's it'll work. But um, it's kind of like the old-fashioned way. So depends how you code. Well, let's get into session four. Uh, I actually looked up the HP characters, first name and last name. Well, you can tell this is not all of them, but uh, th these are the main characters. Okay, and if you don't know he were Harry Potter, it just doesn't matter. It's just first names and last names. That's all. It's a list of first names. Oh, it is a list because it is square brackets. So it is a list. It is a list of. Harry, I'm sorry, it is a list of um, well, in our case, names, but in, specifically in our case, 
Harry Potter characters. I just want to clear the output so we're not biased by the output when we think about what the answer should be. So, um, great. Uh, wait. That's a lot better. So here's Harry Potter characters, and I'm just going to run this cell. Instead of running for uh, running the code with this button, I'm, I'm hitting uh, the shortcut key. So I run it, and it says it's the first cell run, and it it associated uh, this list of these strings inside that list to the variable HP characters. And I'll just say, hey, it's sometimes nice to get a warm feeling that what you asked before actually worked uh, before you proceed on to more ambitious things. So I'm just saying, hey, print out HP characters and say, yeah, that's great. You can ask for the data type, we can ask for the length, we can ask for lots of things, you know. So let's get on with learning more about loops. We, uh, a refresher is there's definite loops and indefinite. Uh, so definite loops are just like definite integrals or you know, you know where you're starting and you know where you're ending. So let's apply, uh, like, how to loop through HP characters, that list of those first name, last names of characters that are in Harry Potter movies. So can you do the length of that? Sure. And it's 16. And stop counting these things because in real life it won't be these small numbers. Like, it will be, you know, it'll be 4,000, it'll be... 70,000 is like you're not going to count them. It just takes too long. And you'll mess up. So, a uh, refresher is this is the same way we did things with um, in, in session or previous session, session three. So, uh, just do the length of HP characters, and that, it'll be this it'll be 16. So, it'll be the range of 16. And we're going to print out I. And HP character, so to say, zero is zero with HP character. One, the first HP character. Two, the second HP character, all the way up to 15. Remember, it goes from zero to 15, which is 16. Okay, great. No fancy formatting. Okay, great. Well, here's the Pythonic way to do it, uh, same as before, but and here's a way to get the index if you need to. You know that. that well, this thing going from 0 to 15 if you need it. Great. But, right here, I want to do some manipulation because just to reinforce your notions of uh, conditionals, like if, if statements and other things you can do on data types. So, remember, the, inside this list are a bunch of strings. You know, it's first name, last name, together. So I think it was session one where we had a string, we had a first name and last name, and we, and we put them together. Well, now we want to pull them apart. So let's go. For character in here. So the string, oh, for character and characters. So it's Harry Potter, and it did something. Then it printed the second one, Ron Weasley, and it did something. Then it did Hermione Granger, and it did something. Well, what did it do? Well, character... Well, it's character is a is a character in the in the movie, so it's uh, the person's uh, you know full name, meaning first name, space, last name. So if you do a split, if you don't give it anything, a split is a uh, an operation, a method on strings. And if you you can split across commas, so you know you can look for commas and say uh, something comma something. Okay, make it two things. Or if you said something, comma, something, comma, something, it'll split into three things. So it'll split across whatever you give it right here, where the cursor's at. So you can split across commas, tabs, split across anything. You know, when I see ED, great, split. So you didn't give it anything, so it's going to split across white space. So Harry... Space Potter. It says, oh, I see a space. Split right there. Okay, there's no more spaces, so you're getting two. You're getting two, like, substrings. 
So you don't know where the space is and you don't feel like writing that code. So in other languages, you have to write that code. It's distracting from your real task. So what's nice about Python, it gives you a lot of neat things where you can actually focus on your real task, not little things like this. I got a string I want to split across every time I see a space. That's, and then you go off doing that for half an hour. So you don't have to do that stuff. So this is just me printing things out just to get a level set and, you know, just to show you what's really happening. So Harry Potter, the string, is coming out as a list of smaller strings. So we don't have anything fancy here. All the names are first name, space, last name. So it, sometimes you can have two things. Sometimes you can only have one name. You know, certain people go by just one name, uh, like Madonna, Prince. You know, they don't have a first name and a last name. That is what they are. Uh, so uh, we got it easy. Everything is consistent. We don't have to do any special crazy uh, exceptions or case handling. This is only the intro. So I, I got Harry Potter and it's put into two smaller strings where it saw, um, where split saw white spaces. So Harry space Potter becomes Harry Potter. Ron space Weasley becomes Ron, a string Ron, and also a string Weasley. So this is just a little example just to print it out. So let's do something with this. So what you could do is character.split, which I did above, comes back with two things. You could assign it. So this is a really nice thing about uh, Python. You could say this right-hand side is always coming back with two things. Instead of saying character splits sub zero gets or gets assigned into first name and character split sub one gets assigned into last name, you could just assign it. Um, so you could have multiple variables on the left-hand side of an equal. And this is called unpacking. So you're getting this in case it's Minerva McGonagall. That's what came out of character.split. And what you said is, hey, I want to unpack it into two separate variables. Minerva goes into first name. McGonagall goes into last name. Great. Now remember, we're in a loop, so it's doing this one at a time, one HP character at a time. And you're saying, great, I got a first name and a last name. I want all the Weasleys. Now, if you're Harry Park, Pop, Potter thing, the Weasley family is uh, intertwined. So Harry Potter and all the Weasleys, Ron and Weasley is, is his best, well, yeah, probably his best friend. And of course he has brothers and sisters and a mom and a dad, and, you know, they sort of uh, love Harry Potter. So there's a lot of Weasleys in the, in the movies. So I'm gonna search for, hey, all the last in our list. Uh, give me all, I'm saying, don't print everybody's first name, last name. Say, you know, if the first name is Weasley, okay. If I say, if the first, I'm sorry, if the last name is Weasley, print the last name. Well, then you'll have Weasley, Weasley, Weasley. So, you know, you'll make mistakes like that. You'll say, oh, no, that's what I want. If the last name is Weasley, print the first name. So remember, what you can, what you make a condition on has nothing to do with the result. So if the last name is Weasley, you do something over here, which is not the last name. It's the first name. So here we go. Yeah, Ron Weasley, Ginny Weasley, Fred Weasley, George Weasley, and a lot more. But they're all the ones that I captured. Okay, great. Okay, this is cool. But you know what? This is an exact match. So remember, it's a string. Last name is a string. First name is a string, but you know, great. But I want to say, I don't want an exact match. I want to do a little more. And there's all kind of not exact matches, okay? So for strings, uh, the ones that come right with Python is you can do a, uh, a, like a, a starts with. So you're saying, what starts with? Well, you have, that's a method. So you have to put it in the context of in this case, a string. So you're saying, if the first name starts with, hmm, G. 
the letter G, I meant. So it could be a lot of things. It could be George, Ginny, uh, Gino. Uh, uh, yeah, a lot of G G Gs. So how do you test that? You don't feel like saying, is it George? Is it, is it uh, uh, Georgine? Is it Georgia? Is it, uh, no, 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 you know, all kind of Gs. Well, you just say, no, no, it, only if it starts with the, the capital. In this case, everything. So we're not doing crazy uppercase, lowercase and stuff. Uh, we remember Python is case sensitive. So we're getting a lot of names that begin with G, we hope. The, in this case, capital G. But remember, this starts with, there's also an ends with. Uh, there, like you want to catch everyone's name who ends in IE. Like, uh, well, not maybe not here, but Eddie or E D D Y that ends in Y, or um, a, a lot of languages have like suffixes on names that mean things, especially surnames. Now I want to find those, so you can say ends with those letters that are like dead giveaways for it, like that your name is some kind of um, nationality. Okay. So we're going to just say starts with G. And we did here, we said, if the first name starts with G, print out, well, in this case, the entire name, you know, the character's name. So uh, in case there's multiple Ginnies, you know, Ginny Weasley and Ginny Smith, you, you know, you don't say Ginny Ginny. It's like, um, so I'm printing out the full name. Okay, great. Well, what if you want to say, I'll take, I want, and this happens a lot in Python. If you, if you, if whatever the method is, uh, accepts one, L, one thing, in this case, it's a string. It's like, what if I wanted to say multiple ones? Like if it begins with G or G E or D T or F I, you can do that. So it doesn't have to be in one character at a time. So in this case, I said, hey, does it, uh, it starts with, so when these methods are written, um, people will look at the data type you provided and act accordingly. So if you give it just one thing, in this case, what we just ran, it's only looking for G's. In this case, you're looking for, in this case, it's a tuple. You're looking for any, well, you look, it's starting with, so you're saying, First name, got a, I got I got a first name right now. Does it start with G or D or anything? So what you do is you put it in uh, some type of uh, delimiter that starts with likes. So I just made it a tuple because I'm not going to be changing this. You know, G and D are not being changed. So it's multiple strings I want you to check if it starts with, meaning the first name starts with. So you say, give me everything, give me all first names that start with G or D. Okay. Oh, and print out the full name. So the big view is I'm going one character at a time, going through all of the Harry Potter characters. We're splitting, we're in one character's name right now, because you're going through the loop, you're doing one character at a time, all 16 of them. So you're at the 0th character, first character, second, third. Okay, we're at one character's name. We're going to say, oh, you got a first name and a last name. Ah, but it's together. So I want to sort of pull it apart. I want to split. And the default is a white space. So luckily there's, uh, you know, the white space, there's only two names. Well, two strings that come out and we're saying, oh, they have meaning. So don't call it string one comma string two. Uh, you know, call it what it is. So it's first name, last name. Great. And then what you say is, you, you know, it's great. We, you know, you know, first time we did the loop thing, we just printed them out. That was kind of, uh, it's, it's okay. But we want to put a condition on there. First of all, because just to reinforce, you know, that we can have loops and ifs and you can have all this stuff intertwined. And in real life, you have to know all of this stuff so that you can pull together to do your task. So on line four, we simply say, does, he, does the name, the first name specifically, 
start with a G or a D. I'm, I'm, I'm confident. An uppercase G or an uppercase D. And you print out the character. And, uh, well, well, we'll get at least the ones from above. We'll get at least Ginny Weasley and George Weasley because they're the G. They're the names. They're the characters where our first name begins with G. What about this guy? Oh, now I was like, how come it didn't do all the G's first and then all the D's first? Well, it's the way you wrote the code. So you said, we're going through one character at a time in the sequence that they appear in the list. So Draco was the first character, Draco Malfoy was the first character in Harry Potter characters list that began with G or D. First name began with G or D. Next character, in, you know, in sequence of the Harry Potter character list that began, whose first name began with G or D with Ginny Weasley. And so these are the order in which they occur in that original, in this case, HP characters list. Okay. So also there, we want to emphasize just a re refresher, I guess, or reinforcement. Uh, there are other, the other uh, way to do loops in Python is in what I call indefinite loops. And they're, and they're, they're you know, uh, they're signified by the while uh, reserve word. Definite loops have the for word, you know, for. So what we saw above was for. When you have an indefinite loop, uh, you um, typically don't know where you're going to end. So just like indefinite uh, integrals, you don't know where you're going to end. You, 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 you're not provided those start and end uh, parameters. So we'll just re uh, reinforce what a while loop will do. So here's i. i is 7. Nothing special. And you want to say while i is less than 14. So the first time around you say i is less than 14. Is 7 less than 14? Yes, do this. So you print out seven, and then here's the important part, line five. You have to, you know, move that index up or down. So if you write a loop and forget line five, it just keeps going forever and forever because I is always seven, and I is seven. It is and seven is always less than fourteen, so it's going to print seven, 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 seven forever. So you got it manage the counter or the index uh, that i thing and you don't have to increment by one you could jump by threes or down by twos uh, like that okay so let's just uh relate this back to harry potter characters list our 16 uh, full names so we're gonna not, not do anything fancy so remember it Python is zero base, so we're going to start at zero. And we're going to print out Harry Potter characters sub i. First time through, it's going to do Harry Potter characters sub zero. Increment i. Now i becomes zero plus one. It's one. Print out Harry characters subscript one. Increment i. So i was one. It's one plus one. It's two. Go around. Print out Harry Potter characters sub two. Get i increment. So two plus one now is three. And it keeps going. And but every time through this loop, it's going around and around and around and around. It's it's constantly checking. Is my current value of i less than we you know the len of this is sixteen? So it's going to keep going. Go up by one, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It gets to uh, 14. It says, okay, increment 15. Is 15 less than 16? Yep, print out the 15th Harry Potter. Harry Potter's sub 15, meaning the last person. Okay. Then it says, uh, I gets one more, so I is 16. And it says, is 16 less than 16? False. It, it, it drops out of the loop. Okay. 
can, you know, we can play with that, you know, all day if you want. So, there are, there's a variation of this while, meaning indefinite loop, and it's, it's what a lot of people will call it, like an endless loop. So, this is a pretty neat example because it demonstrates a lot of stuff we're supposed to know by now. So let's look at it real quick. While true. True is always true. So this is endless. Oh, so it's going to do this loop. I'm sorry, let me hide it properly. It's going to do this forever. So you got to provide, no, you should provide a way to get out of it. And, and a lot of people say break out of the loop. So I'm going to show you how to break. You, you, okay, what we're doing here is we're prompting the user saying, input an integer. By the way, tell the person a little bit about like, oh, you, if you enter zero, I'm stopping. I'm stopping this loop. I'm going to keep asking you and do some things. But if you enter zero, I'm exiting. I'm stopping asking you. So your program stops when it sees things. So sometimes it's called a sentinel, like it comes from railroad talk. So sentinel is a is a is a sign that tell it's a sign actually on the tracks or up above that tells you, uh, you know, proceed or slow down or uh, just stop. So here we go. So when you, if you were to enter, well, oh, I'm sorry, you you enter something, you make it an integer, and you say, by the way, assign it to a number so we can talk to it, you know. We're going to say, is the number this, is the number this, act accordingly. But ultimately, we also say, hey, was that number equal, remember, equal, equal to zero? So this is an integer, so it's easy to compare, um, correctly to compare. You don't compare floats because they're ever so slightly not correct. I mean, the precision. So if you're doing integers, it's great. So if the number you entered, I mean, it's assigned to the number up here. If we saw that the number was equal to zero, equal to zero, we're, we're, I'm going to just say, and, and most people don't say that, but we want to see the actual code run through and have some little print statements as we says, we know it did something because we saw it said leaving the while loop. But the big thing is break. So if there is some condition that you see data coming in and you see that a little sig sentinel that says, you can stop now. That's what a lot of people do. Say, Here's some data. It's streaming. It's coming in. It's coming in. You don't know when it's going to stop. But you say, I got some data. Does it look like a stop? No. Well, that's real data. Do something with it. Next one. Uh, it's not what I'm looking for to stop. So it's got to be data. Do something with it. And that's what this code is. But it, if I see a zero, I'm um, coming out of the loop. And the big thing is you break out of the loop. Great. Well, what are you going to do in between? Like, if it's not zero. Here it is. So let's look at it a little bit at a time. Uh, here's an if-else. Separate from this if-else-if. If, and then, of course, we saw this one, you know. So there's like three separate conditionals, three separate ifs. So format your code real nice that if I put these all together, it would be like, where's this go? So just put a blank line, you know, in here, like, you know, break things apart that this is a concept which has nothing to do with inputting, which is like line two. And and there, that if condition or conditional has nothing to do with this if, has nothing to do with this if. They're independent. Great. Let's look at the first one. We said if number parenthesis two. I'm sorry percentage sign two. Well, what's that mean? Well, this is called a mod operator. And if you want, you can think of it as a remainder. So if I ask you, how do you conceptually, how do you test if I give you a number? How do you, how do you conceptually test if it's an integer? If I give you an integer, how do you conceptually test if it's even? Now, there's a lot of ways you can do it, but uh, some folks will say, well, I'll take the number and divide by two. And if there's no remainder, <clears throat> that original number is even. So that's what mod 
it's called modulus because that's what it's called in math. So it says take the number, divide by two. But we don't care about the, num the what the number is divided by two. We care about the remainder. So some programming languages will call this remainder. Ancient languages call it remainder. But this modulus operator is like a divide, but look at the remainder. So if I take um, 10, 10 divided, if the, if the number was 10, and I say, is it even? You'll say 10 divided by 2 is 5. And I say, yeah, 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 wait. How much is left over? And you'll say 0. Oh, well, then the original number, which was 10, is even. Great. I, earn, I tell you the number is 11. So 11 divided, okay, 11 mod 2. And in your head, you're saying, ah, 11 divided by 2 is 5. But I have one remainder. Ah, not even. So to test evenness, you say um, whatever the number is, mod 2 equals 0. Now, stop the even odd analogy thing, because everyone can relate. But if someone says, I got a number, and for some reason I want to test if it's divisible by 7. It happens. So you say number mod 7 equal equals 0. That means whatever that number was, is it evenly divisible? Well, not evenly. They do say evenly. <laughs> uh, I enter a number, in and I want to test if it's evenly divisible. Well, okay, if it's perfectly divisible by 7, I say, hey, number mod 7, whatever that is, is it equal to equal equals 0? Meaning, is the remainder 0? If that's true, then I know the number was or is divisible by 7. So, you enter a number, we're just saying, hey, we're going to tell you endlessly, you give me a number, I want to tell you if it's odd or even. Give me another number, it's odd or even. 0, I'm out of here. Okay. Well, what else are we going to test? Well, if you just check the print statements, but you can't count on the print statements because most programs don't print a lot. So, what does it test? Oh, it tests if it's if the number you entered was positive or negative or zero. So we saw that from the previous session. So here's a demo of an if, else, if, else. And you can write this multiple ways, but you know, is the number bigger than zero? Then it's positive. What if the number you write? Oh, well, you say that's not true. Well, then I would say, okay, keep going. Keep asking more questions. Okay, well, you said it was not greater than zero. How about, is it less than zero? And and you say, uh, you know, in this case, no. Well, then it has to be zero. So the number you entered is positive or negative or equal to zero. And then, of course, we know this case. Then we simply drop out. But we didn't put this equal zero test at the top because we put it at the top none of these would happen so you're still going to get the benefit of when you type the zero in it you're it's still going to be able to say uh, zero is odd or even whatever it is so zero divided by two is zero no remainder so it zero is technically even but it's not it's neither po zero is neither positive nor negative. It stands by itself. It okay. So uh, okay, let's run this. Sorry, must have typed the save somewhere. Okay, and it's nice. You know, I don't feel like looking for the S. You know, this is seven hundred lines long. It says line twenty. I'm gonna go to line twenty. There it is. Great. I'm gonna run it again. Okay, enter an integer. Three. Okay, 33. 33 is odd. That's true. 33 is positive. Well, that's true too. And it says, hey, so it did this. It said the number is odd. This one said the number, in this case 33, is positive. And it says, hey, but was the number zero? No. So in here you have an if else. You have an is self is self is. Uh, what I if? Else, if, else, and it's just simply an if. So you see all kind of, there's not only three, there's infinite amount of 
ways to combine these. So here we go. Enter an integer. Well, why? Because it's not zero. It's going to keep looping until it sees a zero. Okay. When a, uh, oh, there, better. Uh, I'll say, Nate, I'll say five. Five is odd. It's true. Five is positive also. Okay. How about negative five? Negative five is odd. That's true. Negative five is negative. Um, yeah. Sounds funny. Uh, okay. I'll enter, um, nine or nine. Sure. Nine is odd and nine is positive. That is true. Um, so I'm not blowing it up because, uh, just for time limitations, but I'll say 89, 89 is odd, 89 is positive. Okay, so, um, okay, I'll just say zero, just to move on. Great, so the important part is it, 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 you entered zero and it went, it still went through this case, it says zero, I'm sorry, Zero is um, um, even, and then it went through this part, and it said zero is, well, the number zero is zero, that's kind of crazy, but uh, then it said, hey, it's going to test it, it says, yeah, it is equal to zero, so I'm printing this out, and then I'm breaking out of the loop. So that's when you, um, you, will, you, will, you will use the while loop to say, keep going until I see like my stopping condition. So let's talk about functions and you want to write functions to make sure you have code that you can reuse. So think of functions as like uh, a key on your calculator. Um, and it, it, in programming language, you get a lot of them. Uh, they might look like math operations, but you know, because it's, well, I'm thinking about a calculator now. So it's, it's almost always math. So the plus is a function. So you say number plus number, and it says, great, does the, in this case, the addition thing. But there's also some keys at the top. So if you, if you depending on your calculators, you want to do square root of nine, yeah, square root is a function. Well, in this case, a mathematical function, but functions are things you want to do repeatedly. Well, why is the square root key on your, on your calculator? Because it's used a lot. A lot. So, but it's the same square root. Yeah, you give it a number, it comes back with a number. That's all it does. And it does it well. So functions are uh, like a little set of code that you call to do something very, very, very specific. So a function is supposed to have one job. The square root function is not supposed to do weird stuff, like start prompting the user for stuff or concatenating strings. So what's that have to do with square root? Exactly. You're only supposed to put stuff in functions that make sense only for that very specific task. So functions are supposed to do something very specific and do it well. So let's go. There are all kinds of functions. So you've seen functions before, like print. So functions have parentheses. When you call a function, like it's like you hitting the square root key, it's like put parentheses around it. So you say square root parentheses nine. Okay, so let's just look at, uh, uh, we'll talk about that when we get to this next one. So functions take things. You want to supply a function something so that it can act on it. And you put that, those things that you want your function to act on inside the parentheses. So there's all kinds of functions. So let's talk about it. There's uh, functions that take no parameters, one parameter, and then a lot more. So let's look at one that takes no parameters. So I'm just going to write, uh, and by the way, here's a more Python talk. Uh, you define your own function. So these are sometimes called user-defined functions. So you were using functions before, like print. Print is a function. SUM, if you want to sum up a bunch of things, SUM, like 
add up a bunch of things, you say S-U-M. And you just give it a bunch of numbers and it does it wonderfully. Uh, or mean or standard deviation or whatever. And it doesn't have to be math. So we saw starts with, uh, we, we saw a lot of few. So if you want to write your own function, it's called user defined function. So UDF, if some people say that, but you're defining your own function. So how do you do it? So you say def, like right here that I've highlighted. So you're saying def. Here comes, I'm defining a function. Here it is. First thing is you better give it a name. And give it a name that makes sense. Don't say def function, def function two, def function three. It's like, after a while, it's like, I have that function. I have 300 functions, function one, all the way up to function 300. I don't know which one's which. Well, you're going to have to waste it in half an hour, an hour to find out which one it is. So name it appropriately. So this is called display all HP characters. Okay. Well, if I'm going to display, just go with the name. If I'm going to display all the HP characters, what do I need to know from the user? Absolutely nothing. So where are the cursors at? You don't give it anything. So these are called parameters. Well, there is none. So there's no parameters. It'll be more obvious when we see the one below. So if your function takes no parameters, uh, nothing goes in these parentheses. So, so, okay, great. So I'm defining like a square root key. There's a square root key in your calculator, but it doesn't do anything until you hit it. So I'm defining like the square root key, but it doesn't do anything until I call it. So let's see that happen. So I'm defining, that's what DEF stands for. I'm defining a function called display all HP characters. Well, once I run this thing, it'll know. Python will know about this function. In this case, a user defined function called display all HP characters. Great. What is it doing? Well, uh, it's a loop. Hey, go through all the HP characters and then print out the full thing. Great. Nothing fancy here. I'm going to define it. And it's like, wait, what happened? Nothing happened. No, now it knows about this name of a function. So now it can do this. Before, it, it had no clue about what a display all HP character. So let's just call it. The important part is when you call a function, you put parentheses behind its name. So the, the, these parentheses are calling, in this case, it, there, there's, a, there's a few things that are in the call that actually the name of them are callables. There are a few things that are callable. Functions are callable. So you call that function by putting parentheses behind this name. So I'm going to run this and it prints out. No, well, it quote, well, the name is display all HP characters. So it, it actually displays all HP characters. So try to refer to it with the function name. What's inside is like magic. So after a while, you know, after three weeks, you you, you say, uh, I want to display all HP characters. Just call it. Say, how's it work? Uh, I don't remember. But it works. It's just like the square root key on a calculator. And I'm, oh, I pick on a square root key. It does work. But who cares how it works? And that's what functions do for you. It it's what's called encapsulation if, if you get into uh, object-oriented programming. And what does that do? It removes the gory detail from your head that you don't have to think about. Do you really care how print statement works? Well, it's not a statement. Do you really care how the print function works? I don't know anybody who knows how it, or how, where, or I'm sorry, why or how the print statement works. It just works. It's a, it's a print function. I'm sorry, I keep saying statement. Well. After a while, you don't care how display all HP characters works. It's somewhere, it just works. When I want to display the HP, all of the HP characters, I'm gonna call that function. Well, who wrote it? Well, it could have been another person over there who wrote it. So when you work in bigger groups, you know, different people will be writing different functions, but all together, all of them are like a wonderful well, ecosystem where everything is beautiful. Because everyone wrote all these useful functions. A two-line function like this is not reality, okay? So, that takes no parameters. So, uh, let's have one, to have, write a function that takes one parameter. 
So we're going to define a function, and you can't, well, if you give it the old name, it's going to replace the old one. So we're going to call, we're going to name our thing display one HP character. Display one HP character. It probably displays one HP character because of its name. But give it a good name. Well, what I want, you, you know, you can specify it many ways, but I'm going to say give me the index. So if you say zero, it's going to display the zeroth character. Well, that's Harry Potter. Uh, or you want to display the seventh that in HP character. What's the the character that has the index seven? Okay, great. So here it is. You just say, you just simply say, you know, you give me an index, I'm going to go to HP characters sub whatever the index you gave me, and you know, just print it. Okay. So uh, let me run this one first. So it's going to Python interpreter is going to say display one HP character with no, with uh, I'll do this one. Display one HP character. I can do this too. Display one HP character print print. It's going to call display one HP character function. And it says, I don't know what that is. Because you did not run this code to actually define the function. So I'm going to run this cell, run that code. And then I'm going to run this again. And it's like, and then it'll know. Well, it, the error is a little bit different. It says display HP1 character. It, yeah, well, we know about it, but you have to give us one. You have to give us something. And and its name is whatever name you called it. So this is called a parameter. So I can call this parameter anything. Index is a good name for this case, for this function. So it's going to say, you know what? I know what a display one HP character is, but it's it, it, it requires you to give me this thing called index and you know what it's, it's required and you know you didn't give it to me so uh, let's behave now we say get me the second that the, the, the character in HP characters that, that has index 2 so 0 1 2 remind me great can we do 15 great wait I thought you said there were 16 elements no 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 remember there is 16 elements, but it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 15. So 16 is out of range. So we did not write this code to be what's typically called robust code, where it's supposed to, um, it, 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 you should handle what's called exceptions. So these, this is like an exception. So index error, is that's the error exception. And it's like, we should, we should handle all errors that are, no, we should handle all errors, and 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 uh, a few languages hand that you ask about errors. So you kind of ask this: try this code, and if something, and you, then you put the other. If something blows up, was it one of these? Was it one of these? Was it one of these? So the classic problem is, you know, you get some numbers and you divide the two numbers, and it's like, hmm, that's not always good because. What if the denominator is zero? You can't divide by zero. So you can handle that. Just like this. If you give me an index that's out of range, I mean, it could be negative in this case. It's only zero to 15. Um, you can write code for that. And that's that's better code. Uh, so this is what a lot of people, oh, it works uh, as long as you behave. Uh, I don't know anything about HP characters. I don't know that there's only 16. Can you? No, and, and I can't get to it. It's hidden. And I don't feel like guessing. Can someone tell me? So you will be able to say, you know, with real nice English messages, uh, or whatever your native language is, to tell a person, it's like, we only have 16 HP characters for that kind of stuff. Better code. Well, here we go. We're trying to get to index a floating point number. Right. So typically you read the last line of uh, this is called a traceback and it's an object and you can query all this stuff and find all, and all this stuff. But, you know, if you're just reading it, uh, just go right to the last line. Almost always just go right to the last line. Type. Type. Type error. Yeah. Uh, I want an int. You're not giving me an int. An index should be an int. Great. Well, we know about 
you know, indexes should be integers or slices. We know what slicing is, but you going you gave me a float. I'm out of here. So that's no error checking. So the code is not robust. This is intro Python, so let's continue. So here's one. Find the HP character. Okay. So what is it doing? Um, and it's nice to sometimes put documentation. And this is not what's officially done in Python, but it's a little advanced. So it's, it's called a doc string and all this other stuff. And when you do a help of a function or a help of anything, it goes to that doc string right out of the right out of the box. Python supports it. So if you ever do a help of something, it's giving you the doc string. So if I do a help of find HP character, if I did it properly, um, it would return that because you don't know. It's like I'm I'm using square root. I don't quite get it. Uh, can I ask for help on square root? That's the equivalent analogy. And it'll tell you, uh, I need a number. You can't, well, you can call square root with nothing, but it'll yell. And you can't call square root with more than one number. I only want one thing, and it has to be a number. So the doc string will tell you that. And it says, on top of that, if you were to give me a number, I will give you the square root of it. Else, here's other things. So that's what a doc string does for you, but we're not there. So it's just a real simple one. It's a function defined and returned by index. Okay, here we go. So it's returning um, So the one above, sorry, we're scrolling, this displays it. So prints it. Okay. So that's equivalent to like the square root. If I give it the square root of nine, it's it does it, but it doesn't give it to you. It's like what's kind of wait, I asked this function to do a square root of nine. And I assumed it did it, but it didn't tell me. So you want functions to return to you the thing you asked it to do. So it's called return. So this is not printing it. This is returning it to you. It's up to you to do what you want with it. So when you hit the square root of nine, it, the cat, and, and then you say times. Remember, square root of nine, and you, and you hit the times key. It doesn't show you three. So it didn't, we, it didn't print it. It didn't give it to you. It's saying, I'm still waiting. Okay? So here's the equivalent. So you say, find the HP character. No, we're not displaying it. We're just finding it. That's my name. And it, all it does is return to you the name. It's up to you to decide what to do with it. So here we go. It's going to return uh, this, great. And I say character equal, find the, the second one. So if you remember, that's Hermione. And you say character. Oh, wait, no, wrong one. It's Hermione uh, Granger. But I didn't print it. So I can do anything I want to character. Well, our variable called character, right? Character is Hermione Granger. So her ca character. So I say I say character uh, plus is great. Oh, I think I messed up right. Yeah, I messed up more than me. Okay, character is great. Yeah, it says Hermione. Granger is great because we know we can uh, it, this is the plus operator but when you do strings it's called string concatenation so I never printed it I'm sorry this function didn't print it and that's what happens most of the time you ask a function to do something and it returns it to you it's up to you to do what you want with it sometimes you'll print most of the time you don't you, you do something with it like in our case, we just said, hey, whatever it is, add is great. Or 
you know, you gave me something, I'm going to multiply by 2. But it did not print it. So if these functions did print, 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 there would be all this like side effects and side issues that you have to pay attention to. And it's annoying and it's distracting. So most functions will not do print, 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 print. They will return what you asked for. And it could be involved computation in this function, but this is silly. It's just retrieving, in this case, whatever index you told me. I'm giving you back the name of whatever index you asked for. It's up to you to decide what to do with it. In this case, it's a string. Great. Um, here's some other things really quick. Um, there's an HP character, um, HP characters list. Well, what if I want to add a character? Okay. Here's a function that does it. Add HP character. Okay. There's only one. It sounds like because of the name, I'm going to add one of them. Okay. So, hey, give one to me. And, you know, here's a name. You know, you hope it's a new character. Well, we know it's a list. Can you add Harry Potter more than once? Yes, it's a list. I can have Harry Potter 75 times in here if I want. So, we're not going to do the crazy stuff, but we're going to add add an HP character. So, this says, I don't want to add 75 Harry Potters, you know, one at a time. If I add Harry Potter, I'm only going to add Harry Potter if it's not in the list. If I add Edward Bujak, it says, is Edward Bujak in the list? No. Add him. Um, you know what? Add Ed Bujak. It's going to say, no, 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 no. He's already there. You can only have one Ed Bujak. No. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, we do a check. You said, add this new character. We say, well, wait, wait, wait. Is that new character... Well, if you're in the list, remember, in is a membership. If I try to add Harry Potter, I'm going to say, add an HP character, and I give it Harry Potter, it says, is Harry Potter in the list? Then you say, yeah. Well, I want to do nothing then. So yes, the opposite. You're saying, if you're not in the current list, oh, then you should be added. So you're saying, if you're not in the current list, hey, talk to that list and do an append. So an append we saw, I don't know, probably session two, add whatever this new character is to the bottom, to the back end. So you, you it's like a wish, add this HP character, Harry Potter. And it comes along and says, hey, is Harry Potter in the list or not in the list? No, he's in the list. Does absolutely nothing. You come in and you say, add HP character, Ed Bujack, it says, Okay, is Ed Bujak not in the list? No, he's not in the list yet. Okay, Adam. So, here we go. Let's try to run this thing. So, I define this function, add, eight, add one. And by the way, it takes one parameter. So, you're adding, in this case, we called it new character. So, that's a, that's a decent name. So, please, name it appropriately. Don't call it, you know, Fred or Joe or N, you know, N for name or... Uh, NC for, you know, NC for new character, right? Yeah, no. You shouldn't have to explain it. So, here we go. Uh, give me the length of it, and we should not be surprised that it's, we didn't do anything to the list uh, writing things back. So, this is going to be modifying the list if it's a new name. So, we're going to say, add HP character Albus Severius Potter. That's like a, a combination of three separate characters. There is no, there is an Albus, but, and there is a Severus, and there is a Potter, but they're, this is like a hybrid of three characters' names. Great. So we're going to say, add HP character. Okay, great. And, and remember, the, this, this, this function, this happens in most real life, it doesn't print things out. It does what it wants, and it sometimes returns things. So what did it do? Well, it added it, this Albus, Severus Potter, and now it's and when it's done, it did its thing, and let's print the length of it. It's like 17. Okay, it's one more, and I'm going to say, oh, display all things. So, the, not display all things, display all HP characters. And it's like, it, we know there's 17. Well, it says there's 17. It's like, where did it put Albus Severus Potter? Well, a pen puts on the end. 
Okay, so it's just, it's 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 at the end. Great. Okay, so it's 17 long, and there it is. So what's nice about this happens a lot in in, in programming. I see no loops here, but we know this one probably does a loop. So uh, uh, in advanced programming, you won't see a lot of uh, a lot unless it's really specialty code, a lot of like loops. But they'll be calling functions that do all that looping. So it's it's nice to see this code because you know a lot of stuff is happening, but it's buried. Just like, hey, I'm doing a square root. How's it, how's square root work? Stop thinking about that. Stop worrying about how the function does its job because there's an, a lot of functions and they do really advanced stuff. You really don't have time to learn everything. Okay? So, but you just want to call that function to have it do its thing. You know, I, I'm, I'm here, I'm at this level of math. I really don't care how square root works anymore. Okay? No one cares. Well, you know, stop worrying about how things are done. You know, stop worrying about how the print function works. Stop worrying about how display all HP characters works. You know, it just, it just works. Whoever wrote it. You, you may, might forget that you wrote it. So here's one. I'm going to try to add Albus Severus Potter again. Remember, it's 17 long. Albus Severus Potter is in that list. Great. I'm going to try to add it again. No one yelled. But it didn't grow. It's still 17. Was it Albus? No, Albus Severus Potter isn't there a, a, a second time. Because we prevented that from happening. If you, if you try to add a, quote, new character that's already there, it's like, no. Uh, just please go back. You know, we're not going to complain. You're asking me to add somebody that's already there. And this happens a lot. And it's really neat that your code is this way. Like, I'm going to have a lot of names. I don't know how many people are repeating. Just keep adding them. But the code should not let... The code should have unique, in this case, names. Great. So here's one. Add Sirius Black. Now we know Sirius Black is there. It's right here. Nothing special about the end. That's what I just want to say. It's, it's nothing special. Yep, it's still 17. We know Sirius Black pre-existed in that list. Okay, great. Well, can you remove? Well, you remove one at a time. So, whatever word you use, it's kind of... Uh, most function names have, uh, like, verbs in them. Like... Display. Okay. Add. Okay. Remove. Now that's most of the time true. So, so uh, give it some kind of, it's a verb, so it's like an action word. It's not like, verbs are typically called action uh, uh, words. So, remove. Yeah, remove. Okay, just don't call it remove. It's like, remove. Remove what? So, give it a, a decent name. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove HP character. Character. Oh, that sounds like one. Now, ultimately, I'd write this really more advanced, but it's intro. So, we're only going to give it one character to remove. Okay? So, if I say remove Albus Severus Potter, it you're here, I can remove you. You you give it this list and say remove Ed Buda. You're going to say, I can't remove something, conception. I can't remove something if it doesn't exist. So, we should, should we yell? Hmm. It's up to... How you program. So we're going to check that. So you, you, you're you going to call this function. Well, this is this is the definition of function. What does it do? Well, it has a name. Remove HP character. Great. It takes the name of the character you want to remove. Okay. First thing you should check is, hey, you know if that character removed that you gave me? Um, is it in the list? Well, if it's in the list... I then can remove it. So you're saying, hey, you know the character name you gave me? Uh, check if it's in that list, the HP character. It, okay, if it is, then I can remove it. So I'm going to say, hey, you know what? Somebody told me it's already there. So I'm good to go to remove it. So line five says, hey, HP character, you know that list? Remove it. Well, you know, what if I come in and I say, hey, remove HP character Edward Bujack. It says, hey, is Ed Bujack in the HP character? Nah. He's not there. 
just just ignore him, move on. So it's not yelling. And you can have it yell, depending how you write your code, depending how people want it to behave and things like that. So we actively only remove things that are actually there. So here we go. I want to define this function. I'm going to just run it. And I'm going to say, remove Penelope pit stop. So you ancient people, uh, you know who that person is. A cartoon. <laughs> anyway, uh, one of the many. Uh, here we go. So Penelope pit stop is not here. So you're going to try, you're going to say, remove HP character, um, Penelope uh, pit stop. Oh, I guess I could have displayed length too. But here we are. Penelope pit stop was not there. And she's still not there. And the list has not been changed. Now, Albius Severus Potter is not a real person. Like later on, you'll get stuff and you're saying, that is not right. That line, that entry in the list, that entry in my database is wrong. So you want to figure out how to remove it. Well, you give it information and if it's there, it will remove it. So here we go with an attempt that is real. So we're going to remove HP character Alba Seven Rivers Potter, and there it is on the last, well, on the back end of the list. So uh, we're going to remove it and then display again. So and the list went down by one. So uh, Alba Seven Rivers Potter, wherever they're on the list, doesn't have to be on the end, uh, was removed. That's what the remove uh, function does, okay? So folks, this is great uh, for time. Uh, the big thing is uh, functions are, you, are the way when you use def, that's defining your, your function, the user defined function. And uh, we only saw a little bit of Python in, in our short four one hour, four one hour sessions. So uh, this is the beginning. Uh, uh, keep learning Python. Uh, don't worry about learning everything. You won't. And cut off where you get into detail that is beyond what you need to know. So you don't need to know how square root for, works. Well, most people don't need to know how square root works. Most people don't need to know how all these functions work. You just use them. You should focus on your user-defined functions that are quite unique to your task and you'll write them. If you find out you're doing the same thing over and over again, just go off and write a function and you'll be happy later because it's like, you know, three months later, it's like, I'm glad I wrote that function. I use that function every day. I don't know how it works anymore because, you know, you wrote it three months ago, but you use it every day. And that's the point of a function, uh, reusability and hides that stuff from you. You don't need to know the gory detail. You wrote it. So that's what's really neat. Uh, user defined functions. So uh, they're it, very useful. So you got the basics of Python. Uh, happy journey uh, continuing your Python uh, learning experience. Um, it, it's, uh, it's a great language. It's uh, very uniform. It makes sense most of the time. Like 99.9% .9 of the time. It's very consistent. And uh, you know, it's used everywhere. So it's a great language to learn. Only, well, not only because it's easy to learn, but it's also, uh, it, it, everyone uses, not, not everyone, it's used in a lot of places, o almost everywhere. So it's a general purpose language, it's great. So good luck, happy journey.